Welcome to Family Business Diaries, the podcast where we unravel the secrets of family businesses. I'm your host, Mary Asantia Samoa, and today our guest is a distinguished legal professional, Nanayao Intraqua, who serves as a partner at Intraqua & Co., a family business his father founded in 1984. Allow me to introduce our guest. Nanayao Intraqua was called to the Bar of England and Wales, Middle Temple, in 2007 and the Ghana Bar in 2008. His practice areas include energy law, litigation, corporate and commercial law, company secretarial practice, arbitration, and intellectual property. His impressive legal career includes memberships in prestigious professional associations, such as Litigation Council of America, the Ghana Bar Association, the Legislative and Reform Committee of the Ghana Bar Association, and the Corporate Law Institute. Nanayao's extensive educational background is equally noteworthy. He has an LLM in Energy Law, an, L an LLB, and a Bachelor of Arts in Business. Working alongside his father and two siblings, Nanayao brings a rich blend of experience and knowledge on legal aspects within the realm of family businesses. Nanayao, thank you so much for honoring our invitation. Welcome to Family Business Diaries. Sure, it's a pleasure. Uh, I'm so happy to have you here. So I, I feel like this episode is, you know, it's a double blessing almost because we get to hear your story, but we also have, you know, a lawyer in the house. You have all the information. So, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to this conversation, okay? But to start things off, can you just tell us your personal journey? How did you end up in this family business your father founded? Okay. Um, where do I start? I attended uh, St. Teresa's Primary. Maybe I start from there. Um, then from there, I went to Pesek. I, can, I cannot do oh, this yeah, without, without mentioning <laughs> Pesek. <laughs> you guys. Special so, ones. yes. So, um, when we completed Presec, my goal or my aim was to go to America. Okay. I, I don't know why I picked America, but that, that was what I wanted to do. Eventually, I did. I went to America and I had my first degree. And uh, so, that was from 2000, no, 1999 to 2003. So I had my first degree in 2003. So graduation, you know, my parents came for my graduation and then we had a chat about what I wanted to do. What yes, what next, you know. Uh, do you want to come back home to work? Uh, no. <laughs> but then my sister was getting married around that time in December. My OJT, that's on the job training permit, was would expire. So it seemed like the right time to go back home. So then I packed my things. Then I came back home. Um, it's a law firm. I wasn't a lawyer. So but you did law. I did law later on. So I came down, worked as, a, as an office manager. Uh, my first task was to upgrade the IT system. When I, when I came to Ghana in 2003, they were using Windows 98. So I upgraded all the systems. Then I started working as an office manager, and it became so boring. You know, you go to work, and uh, you just... I mean, there wasn't much for a young man that I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yes. So... I decided um, to go and do law, to study law, so that I could be of more, more help to the business. So in, in reading my dad's uh, draft, I realized that that aspect he wrote as a shock to him <laughs> because I, I never had the intention of becoming a lawyer. They were preparing for me to go and do a master's in another field, and then suddenly I decided to do law. Yes. And also my my role models were all lawyers. So that was when it hit me. I'm like, okay, uh, why not do law? So you get a personal fulfillment 
and then uh, you can also help. So I went to study law and then came back. I returned in 2007. And then I started working. I started as a pupil. That's the lowest rank. And then I rose to partner. <laughs> so that's where I am. Interesting story. I mean, I was going to ask you because to just... Because law school is not easy. There's a lot of reading involved. So you have to have the passion, the call. You know, you have to really feel like it to be able to sign up. So that's very nice of you to go to go get that. And how did it feel? I mean, rising through the ranks, like how was it? Did you think that as soon as you went for that law degree, you know, your dad would give you a seat at the table or you were made aware that you definitely have to go through from the bottom? Yeah, for law, you don't have an option. Oh. <laughs> you you have to be a pupil before you can rise. So uh, you can't just walk in and become a managing partner. I mean, my dad always says that to be recognized, you need to have practiced for 10 years before someone can have confidence in you. So I was like, well, <laughs> that could be the case some years back. <laughs> but for us, at least five years because technology, things have changed. So yeah, the goal, the personal goal was to get to the top by the half mark. Yes. And you're at the top now, right? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> how, how does it feel? I mean, I was, I was reading your profile. I'm like, hey, the whole family, three siblings, all lawyers, your dad is a lawyer. Like, how did it feel growing up and have, or being at home with all these people? What, what was your house like? Give us, give us a sneak peek. I really want to understand the conversations at the tiny tip. Sure. Surprisingly, um, we don't argue at home. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because we do too much <laughs> talking outside, you know, after arguing in court or, you know, making submissions in court, you want your peace of mind. So at home, we, we don't really argue. You know, um, we of course we'll talk about common cases and stuff, but then there's no room for argument. There's room for disagreement. Um, you know, my brother will hold a different view. My dad, my mom, and the other siblings. You know, so yeah. But it's never been acrimonious, if I can put it that way. Yeah. So, what? What are the unwritten rules, right? Because you say you can have, you know, different different um, opinions, for instance, but you know how to go about. So, what are the what are the unwritten rules when it comes to your family and your company? Right. I think, luckily for us, certain things have been aligned naturally, in terms of age. So, my sister is first in terms of age. Then I come second, then my brother. Oh, I have a younger sister who is not a lawyer. He's a medical doctor in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. She she walked away. <laughs> she, she's like, you guys can do this on your own. <laughs> yeah. So the ages align. And in law, we, we work with seniority. So um, my sister qualified first, followed by me, and then my younger brother. So in that order, it's been aligned. There's, there's no room for fighting over who should say what. And, you know, so we are lucky in that respect. So we respect each other. I think that's key. There's that mutual respect for each other. But I, I think, and maybe that's why I said your case is a double blessing, because unlike other family businesses where... I mean, they don't know the rules. People don't know that. I mean, with you guys, it's almost like the profession has structured everything for you. So, you know, it doesn't really cause strife within the family, right? That, that's true. The other thing is also the fact that our father is not only a leader, but has a vision. He's a visionary leader. And I think that's key. Um, one thing I think has helped us is also discipline. Uh, I always say, in the absence of discipline, chaos follows. So right from infancy, there's been that discipline. So it naturally flows into the workplace and in the, in the home. Once there's discipline at home, there's discipline at the workplace. Because those values are instilled in exactly. you, so you, you, they can't take it from you, exactly. right? That's awesome. Now, 
I'm not even sure if I should ask this question because you told me about the ranking, but so your father stepped stepped down recently or right? Oh, we booted him out. However, you put it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? You're like so, it's enough, eh? Well, you know, at a point in time he, he had, you know, confidence in us. Mm. We were as we rose to partners and he's he had always said, Well, media my media, I've yeah. done my part. It's you know, the rest is yours. So um he you know it, it's a tough job. Yeah. It's quite demanding. So at his age, we don't want him running to Supreme Court, running to the High Court. So we do all of that. And then he stepped back. So my sister took over as managing partner. No, I was about to ask who got yes. who got the slot. So yes. it's your sister. Naturally. I mean <laughs> there's no there's no contest. There's no contest. That's yeah. awesome. I love how the respect is there. Please. Yeah. Naturally, you yeah. take your place. Yeah. And when she speaks to you, you don't, there's no, you respect that. Everything yeah. she says. We respect it. But we, when we disagree, we share our disagreement. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I always say in, in the firm, those on my team can see the, the striking disagreement in something like the font size used in the drafting documents. My brother prefers Bookman. I hate Bookman. Why? I, I can't stand <laughs> looking at Bookman. I prefer Times New Roman. That's me. <laughs> oh, <school. laughs> so um, when there's a document from his team, you can you I can't tell. We don't use Times New Roman anymore. I, I, I know, I but be... yeah, I I just can't stand Bookman. So don't bring me a document that has that font. I, I can't read it. And this is not about family business no. issues. It's just please, this is my preference, yeah, right? <laughs> so and in that disagreement, what works for his team, he he does it. And then what works for me, I do it. So do you see the family, I mean, you're three partners, right? Do you see yourself opening up and having an individual who's not part of the family be a partner? Absolutely. In our organogram it's clear. So with my business admin background, we've drafted the organogram. You can rise through the rank and become a partner. Yeah. Which is very good for your, your team, right? I mean, so then everybody knows, so there's a future for me if I choose to stay on. That's, that's really good. So, I mean, before I move on to the other things, I just want to, I mean, how did it feel working with your dad? Did you ever have to go to court with him? Did you, did you feel pressured, you know, big shoes? How, how did you feel handling? Well, I think he was happy when I decided to practice as a lawyer. An uncle called and told me that. I he didn't say that. Right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he is even aware of this conversation <laughs> I had with my uncle who who passed away some years back. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, um, I took I took the decision to learn from him. There was one time I said to myself that look, people pay daddy for advice. You get it for free and you don't want it. Yeah, Top. Yeah. So I studied. I, I went with him everywhere. I remember there was one time we had a Supreme Court case and uh, he had to travel. And I said, hey. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, where are you going? <laughs> and then he said, well, these were his words. I leave it in your capable hands. I mean. Yeah. So that was reassuring and encouraging, uh, you know. That yeah, so. Give you a step, like, when yeah, you're walking, you're like, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I studied from him. And uh, he spent time, everybody who's worked at Intraco and Co knows that my dad likes to teach. He likes to share knowledge and experience. So that's why, apart from Intraco and Co, which is a law firm we run, he set up the Corporate Law Institute and then corporate profile limited but today we'll focus on track and code yeah uh, are you guys involved in those ones as yes well? yes yes we okay. run those two as well but so so even though he stepped back from the law firm or like going to court and doing all this he's still available to you know teach others is that what it is right so he teaches at a law school and then corporate law institute was designed to train lawyers so already qualified lawyers so and then law schools for training upcoming lawyers um yeah he does the trainings once in a while these days my brother does it and uh yeah he stepped back he's writing books so he still has his office he comes in from time to time 
and then uh yeah but in terms of day-to-day running of the business no we we, we do that capable hands yeah. left it in the capable hands yeah. of the children so that's <laughs> awesome all yeah. right i mean I'm happy that when you talk of the business side, everything is fine. You know, you seem to have it very well structured. Let's talk about Nanayao. So apart from law, I mean, you said when you did your undergrad, you were, I mean, this was not the plan. You're not trying to be a lawyer. Now this is where you find yourself. Are there other aspirations? Do you have other plans? What is it that Nanayao likes? Do you see yourself starting something on the side? What? Let's talk about Nanayo and what he enjoys doing. Right. At the age of 21, I believe, I set out three goals for myself. Um, the third goal was to serve my country. Hey. Yes. Who was your president? Hey, serve in what capacity, please? So, Break so, it down. So, as the ultimate servant. So. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so that, that that was my third goal. So I've accomplished two, I believe, and uh, the third one we, we are it's work in progress. So you see that my role models, or quite a few of presidents, have a lot of background. Yes. Right. So this kills, uh, you know. So there's a plan in place. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, it works for me. It works for the firm. What other what other things yes. do you have? <clears throat> my hobbies, my hobbies are security and intelligence, aviation. So I write articles on these. I've studied. Um, I remember in two thousand and eight when Obama, President Obama, came to Ghana. Um, I went around the TV stations and I told them what I could do. I can talk about the security and all of that, and then people are like, "Hey." No, we don't want that on our, st- uh, our set. It's too, it's too scary. But it's needed. It's needed. So we did a case with, uh, maybe I mentioned that, one of the former presidents of the Ghana Bar Association. And I told him that I could do something like this. And I was like, no, I know, I know you. If you say you can do it, you can do it. Let me connect you. So he connected me to one of the TV stations, and then I went and then I spoke about the security detail, the planning, and all of that. Then in the evening, after you know, some people watching, some people started reaching out to me to come, like, no, when I was looking for somebody, <laughs> <laughs> nobody it's called me. Case, yeah. Nobody, nobody believed in me then. Mm-hmm. Now that you've seen what I can do, you are coming after me. No. Anyway, so there was I did I agreed one of the presenters i'm not too sure if i want to mention names but they know themselves yeah they you know called me to say that one radio station you know needed to speak to me so let me do that so i agreed to go in the evening to one of the radio stations and we had a good interview i told them there was a debate about how president obama was going to get from accra to cape coast the presenter said it's going to be by road. I said, no way. No There's way. no way they'll put their <laughs> president in a vehicle on the roads in Ghana and go. So I said, it's going to be by helicopter. The helicopters are here. They come this way, that way. They will land over there. The yeah, I know. <laughs> so then, um, yeah, all of that happened. Days later, I received a call from some of my colleagues and said, hey, are you not afraid? With all this information in your head, are you not afraid? Anyway, so that's the security and intelligence bit. But I have a passion for aviation. So I do flight simulation. And uh, yeah, I have a, a handle, or I don't know what it's called these days. <laughs> <laughs> I have an account uh, on Instagram. It's called Avisonian or Avisonian. And uh, you would see me flying in simulation though over you know different parts of the world i like sightseeing i like traveling so if i cannot go to brazil i'll fly over brazil yeah so that's fly simulation i mean one man Mm. one minute you're reading book and doing what next minute you're flying over places yes yes you know the good the good thing with the flying is that if you want to get from accra to kumasi by air maybe 40 minutes you have to sit 40 minutes 
so you can read your book. <laughs> <laughs> Once you take off and you know you are at cruise altitude, you can read your books and then you take over when you want to land. Interesting. Yes. I mean, this is <laughs> lawyer, pilot, <laughs> security <laughs> detail experts. I mean, yeah. do you see yourself? Have you thought about it? That mm, let me leave this law side. I want to focus on the like. Have you have you had such? For exactly. for now, for now, no. For now, no. I enjoy what I do. I really enjoy what I do. I do litigation, and uh, when I'm in the courtroom, I feel at home. So I love it. It's not something I can just, you know, leave somewhere. You know, we, we've been talking about, you know, roles in the office and all of that. And uh, the decision is that, look, you enjoy this thing. So you stay with litigation, and then we look at other areas so i think that's one of the good things right everybody play to your strengths almost and stick yes. to what you're good at yes so that's that's so even though your sister is the boss and all of that you still focus on that it's not no i want you here she still focuses yes. on who's yes. good at what yes. and uses that. so we all have different specializations mm -hmm. in, in the law so um she does intellectual property mainly and then um, my brother does construction as well and then I do litigation. So that's the law aspect. In terms of administration of the business, we all have different roles as well. So we are running the legal or the law practice, and we are running a business as well. So it's not easy combining both. But my sister does um, the finances aspect. I do the human resources, the hiring, the training of lawyers. And then my brother does business development, so growing the bit, yeah, growing the business and all of that, yeah. So then when we look at your journey, I think everything has aligned, everything has fallen into place because Mr. Prisekan <laughs> wanting to go to America, like oh, I feel like everything has fallen yeah. in place for you, right? Yes, yes, it's been a miracle. Well, that's amazing. So, work-life balance. How do you manage it? Because the few lawyers I have in my life, I mean, I don't know how they do it. Those those books and the things you have to read, all of that, and then on the side, you are doing your flight. Like, how do you manage work-life balance? It's not easy. Um, I'm a father. I'm a husband. <laughs> you know, I have two kids and uh, a wife, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always important to mention that aspect. Yes. <laughs> you don't like that. <laughs> yes, so it's not easy. And I'm a hands on that, you know, in the mornings, I like to be involved in the kids getting ready. So, yes, yeah, so I do that. I wake up, I'm the first to wake up. The kids wake up after me, get them ready. Then my wife sends them to school. So she does the morning shift, and then I go to court. <laughs> then, um, yeah, whilst, you know, they are school. I'm either in court, attending a board meeting, working, doing negotiation or something. Then in the evening, well, my wife is also a career woman, if I can. She's a partner of one of the big four. Oh, okay. Right. So in terms of accounting. Then she's also a very busy woman. Exactly. <laughs> so, but we try to meet each other, you know, halfway. We, we, we share the roles. So not one person is burdened. But all in all, it's not an easy task. Somehow, it, it works. Yes, it works. But you definitely make time for yourself. Of rest, course. All of that. Because you know these days, of course. too much pressure is not good. It's not good, yes. We are protecting our mental health. Mm -hmm. Please, promoting that. So, okay. So, let me, let me tap into your, you know, your expert side. Right? So... In terms of family businesses, I mean, yours is probably one of the ones we can all look at, look up to, right? And structure things better in our businesses. But what would you say are some of the key problems that Ghanaian family businesses um, are dealing with? Or, you know, what have you encountered so far when it comes to family businesses in Ghana? I think the most important thing is conflict. Mm. I mean, we are lucky we don't have, I mean, zero conflict. Others are not so lucky. Um, how to deal with conflict? Um, 
from experience, people hire a third party to sit down and talk. I've seen several court cases, you know, and um, yeah. So the main issue is conflict. And with that, it affects family businesses in Ghana. How do we navigate that? How do we get family businesses to deal or prevent these things from happening, right? Okay. So I, I believe it all comes to structure. If, if we know that, for example, in our office, you can't go to the accountant and say, how much have you made today? Give, Give it, it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's one way of preventing conflict. It's there. The rules are there to follow. Yeah. So having the right structures in place is, is key. So, I mean, and this is what Family Business Diaries is about. It's just encouraging, you know, family businesses to put in these right structures and systems because at the end of the day, I mean, that's where everything starts from. That foundation is needed, right? So thank you very much for confirming what we've been saying. Now, um, another key thing is intellectual property. We, we've been hearing that a lot these days, and it's a vital asset for many businesses, right? Um, how can family businesses protect their intellectual property, and what are the, you know, the, risk, the potential risk if they don't? Right. Um, another thing I will say is that family businesses don't typically want to use other professionals. So, yeah, we know it's our dad's business, it's our business. I've been here 20 years. Why should I consult a professional? But even us, we do. Oh, you do? Yeah, we do consult professionals. So, in terms of protecting um, the intellectual property, one thing is recognizing that such a thing exists to begin with, and then taking the step of consulting a professional, should I say lawyers, to do that for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that, that's what has to be done. Okay. Right now, we're just tapping into, into you, so don't worry. So, um, one other thing, family businesses, you know, they operate across generations, so that's what we're trying to promote, right? Businesses that transcend generations. Um, how, how can family businesses, um, almost like, use use the law to foster transparency and maintain that harmony. You talked about conflict and having the structures in place, but like you say, we don't, we don't um, engage professionals enough. So what is it that you think when it comes to lawyers, what can family businesses engage lawyers to do to make sure that, you know, we are able to prevent some of these problems and have businesses that transcend generations? So there's running the business aspect in succession. I'll, I'll, again, I'll say professionals. I, it's just lawyers com, comes to mind now. <laughs> but, you know, um, having... Th there are instances where you, you look at people's um, wills, for example, and you see that they had the intention to do something. But it's not either not written at all or wrongly written. Then they don't get to see it because by that time they have passed on. And then the other generation has to deal with it. Multiple interpretations, fight, court, 20 years, 10 years. Yeah, that's just listed. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing. I think if, if you have a kid or a relative you want to take over, you encourage the person. Um, what my dad has always said is, don't force the person. You know, he, he never forced any of us to, to do law. So when you decide that you want to do it, you treat it differently. It becomes a personal you know, thing you want to do. So don't force the person. We, my sister's daughter is now in law school. Oh, wow. Yeah, she wanted to do, um, I think, medicine. And uh, one day I asked her to follow me to the court. She witnessed a, a cross-examination I was doing. <laughs> and uh, she came and was like, okay, doing I'm doing law. <laughs> 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 so don't, don't, don't for you can encourage, but don't force. Yes. So in terms of succession planning, that, that's some of the key things. But, okay, 
So I like what you say because from other guests that have come, they always talk about expose expose the younger generation to to what you do, right? And so maybe it's in seeing taking her to the court. That's how she was able to see that hey, I like the action here. I want to do this, right? But I like what you talk about when it comes to succession and you know putting things down. I think when when you talk about Ghana or when you do research on problems to do with family businesses here, one of the key things is the succession planning. Yes, and maybe it also comes back to what you say about they don't engage the professionals, right? What should, in your opinion, a succession plan entail? What are the things that a founder or someone who's willing to hand over to another person put in place? This one is free consulting, <laughs> but what are some of the things? Because you find many court cases and I'm like, well, why didn't he just make it plain that this is what he wants? So what are the things that you say should be? Well, first of all, what is the business owner's uh, intention? What does, what's the plan? What does the business owner want to do? Do I want uh, my family members to take on this business? Do I want to bring in third parties? So you decide and then have it written. Have it written, uh, you know, have an, an expert. So, so here we are moving from a professional to an expert. So to capture what we really want on paper. And I think it will be good to also let the people you plan to work with, you know, in on, on the idea. They may not necessarily want to do what you want them to do. So you get their buy-in as well. Um, what else? I think I think that's. But, but that that awkward. I mean, this last point you you brought up, right? What we find most of the time is when the person is dead and gone, then they bring this thing and come and read out the rules of the game, right? What What do you think is best? I mean, is it not is not better to almost disclose everything? Let's discuss so that you can correct what needs to be corrected. Put the right things in place. Like, which do you, which one do you agree to? That let's split whilst you are alive. Or say what it is that you want, and then fix things as opposed to leaving this shock, right? Right. There, obviously, those are the two ways. I've, mm -hmm. I've seen both. There, I've seen situations where people in their lifetime will do the handover, and then some. Are afraid to do the handover during Why their life. Uh, you know, uh, the human being is an interesting <laughs> uh, creature. Yeah, <laughs> so you don't know what will happen if you tell this human being that, okay, I'm leaving this for you and that kind of thing. Yeah, the other method is also, you know, doing it by the will. Um, which one is a preferred one? Uh, personally, I would opt to do it when I'm alive. Just yeah. to. Yeah, and also to guide the people, nurture them, you know. Yeah. But if you wait, you know, write it somewhere, it's open up to interpretation and uh, it's not easy to agree. Things can fall apart quickly. Yeah. yeah. But, but there are also some people that, I mean, I've heard one story like that where they almost, as a woman, meaning the person had marked the child down, like knew that. So then they pass away and then the thing is read and you, you realize you don't even show up on there. Like maybe you served all these years, done so much, and then surprise, like you're you're not in there. Like how so in that case, like can I come to a lawyer that's please, please. I'm sure my father was under some <laughs> It happens. We've seen that, you know, several times. But the advice to um people like us is try try and do your part as the son, as the child. What part? Like what? Yeah, you know, um, you know what your father's expectations are. Um, if you want to fall in line, you do. You, you do. You yeah, should align you it. Do. But don't expect to go uh, a different way and think that despite the descent, he will give you, you know, something. So you are not entitled to it. It is not yours. That's that's the key message. Yes, it is not <laughs> yours. So if you want it, you work, work towards it. it. Yes, if you work towards another person's business or you work towards your own business, then work towards this one. That's true. That's true. 
And I'll thank you so much. I mean, as we wrap up, I, I feel like I've taken a lot of advice from you already, but what one advice based, based on your own? No, actually, let me ask you a question before. If you could do anything differently, right? From Mr. Prisekan, I don't know. I just love that. So I'll keep mentioning it all the way through till now. If you could do anything differently, would you, and what would it be? No, I've actually thought of that. And the decision I've come to is that I won't do anything different. You know, the mistakes, you know, they've all shaped me to become who I am today. So I don't wish to be anything else. I don't think I'll change, you know. I mean, I I, I may have, you know, hurt people along the way. I'm sorry for that. Sorry. But for me, it, it's an experience. It's shaped me, you know, so. That's good. All right, so closing remarks, I mean, if there's an advice you would give to those who are considering working in family businesses, what would that be? Based on your own experience and everything you've been through, what would you, what advice would that be? Right. Um, try and avoid conflict. Self-respect, respect for each other, you know, integrity, professionalism. These are values that you would require to run the family uh, business, you know, because if you do not resolve an issue, not only are you dealing with your immediate family, but your extended family, if I can put it that way, your wife's family, it cuts across. So it becomes a huge problem. So the advice is to deal with conflict. Um, disagreement need not be acrimonious. And I'll thank you very much for being so open and candid, Mr. Boga. I'm so <laughs> grateful to you for just sharing so much. I I need to visit I need to visit your dad. I, I want some apple from him, so I'll be coming. But thank you very much for sharing. I'm sure our audience is very much blessed to have you on here. So thank you. Yeah, thank you too. And thanks for creating uh, this platform. I think uh, family businesses will appreciate what you are doing. Yeah. We're making a difference. We are helping We are helping the nation. <laughs> but you are Mr. President, so let us work towards that. Thank you sure. so much. To our audience, many thanks for joining us on this episode of Family Business Diaries. We release new episodes monthly, and you can find the show on all podcast streaming platforms, as well as the Family Business Diaries YouTube channel. Follow us on social media at Family Business Diaries for behind-the-scenes actions and updates. See you on our next episode. Bye.